I'm going to show you how in about five minutes of actual work, I was able to scrape some website data off of two URLs and it really saved me a ton of copy and paste time where I otherwise would have been going to each of these URLs manually and then copying and pasting name, address, uh, email, website, all that stuff into an actual spreadsheet. Let me show you what we're doing here. So this is a very niche website. It's a uh, locator page for the Celebrate Recovery Groups. And I need the contact information for the people that are in charge of these different groups at each of these different churches, right? So super niche. Uh, anyway, I, I figured there's probably a way to extract that automatically instead of me just copying and pasting. And there is. The first thing that I did, well, the first thing I'll tell you about actually, see this stuff down here at the bottom this area, this is called the developer tools, this whole, you know, black thing down here, this little uh, menu. This is the structure in HTML format of the website. So I'm not a programmer, but I know enough. I know the lay of the lands, uh, especially with web development to where I can get around and kind of see how pages are structured. Right here is the uh, specific element that I needed. This is the URL. Whoa, we don't need to zoom in that much. This is the URL down here of each sub page. So each of those churches has a sub page where the contact information actually lives. Okay. Uh, incidentally, F12 will toggle those developer tools on and off. Control, control shift and C will make it so you can highlight something, click on it. And then down here, it actually will show you what you clicked on. So it's this element right there that I clicked on. Okay. Uh, so I know that we could go into each one of these. We could find the contact info. It's over here, name, number, email address. You know, for 11 results, probably by now I could have done that manually. I'm making a video about it. It's going to take a lot of time. But I want to illustrate the point of how powerful some of these automations can be with some pretty basic AI tooling. And as long as you can kind of speak the language and very specifically know what you need and uh, ask the AI how to get it, it's going to give you some pretty reliable code. Uh, first thing that I did, I tried to do everything all in one fell swoop. So I'm using the Edge browser and in Edge, uh, right up here in the top right corner, can you see it? right up here. So you can actually toggle Copilot on and off and it can read the web page that you're on. And I actually thought that maybe I can just get it to all happen in the browser live and probably a more complicated script. You could do that. But again, being the amateur that I am, I, I failed the first time around. I tried to get it to do everything. And here's the first prompt that I used right up here. So this kind of worked, but kind of not. So I told it that, hey, you can inspect the list element items to see that they have a div and then an anchor tag in them. That's just HTML talk saying how that structure was in the developer console. So it gave this AI, the Copilot tool, an idea of what it needed to extract. But then I, I tried to like get it with some pretty lazy prompting to go all the way to the next page and give me the actual results and it, it failed to do that. But what it did not fail to do was give me the list of email addresses. So I further refined it. Let's see right here. Yeah, I further refined it and said, hey, that didn't work. But just give me the list of addresses because I figure I can write a Python script that will actually go to each address and pull the contact information out, which is what we're that's where we're headed. That's what I did. So it actually did a great job. This is what it came up with right down here. This worked on the first try, uh, which is always like quite awesome when it works the first time. And it's not that long. So I copied this and I'll copy it again. And I went down here in our dev tools. And another part of the dev tools is this console. So this is where you can write JavaScript code. I can say something like clear and it'll clear that out. And then I can paste in that code that it just gave us. There it is right there. And then we can just run it. Check that out. All extracted URLs. Okay, so it printed it out for us. And here's the list. There it is. That's pretty sweet, right? But then I went a step further. I said, hey, can you actually save them as a text file? So over here, said, hey, please save them. And then check this out. It actually did. So it saved them as a text file. 
Um, so I'm going to copy this script it gave us, put that over here. It's a little bit longer because it's doing the saving part and look up here. Boom. Text file saved. How about that? So it saved that to my desktop. I renamed it and this is what I got. I mean, this is the text file with those addresses. Okay, so then I know that we can write Python to automate uh, scripts for us and run that on our computer. This is the really cool part. Python is extremely powerful. I, I hope that you're, you're as excited about this as I am because it's, it's just, it saves so much time with tasks like this that would otherwise take a lot of uh, piecing things together. So I went over to our good friend, Claude, and look at this. I, I literally did one prompt and it worked the first time. And I, I need to maybe tweak it because I didn't get the name of the location, but it worked for what I needed the first time. So here's the prompt I used. Hey, I've got a list of URLs, that text file, right? Each one represents a listing page that contains a name, email address, and phone number, one, two, three. And then, this is really cool, see the pick for the inspected HTML elements. So not only did I tell it this, but I actually screenshotted an image of this right here, which was from the developer console on our actual listing page. Let me show you what I'm talking about because this is, this is blowing my mind a little bit. So once you go to one of these pages, here's Wallace Memorial Baptist Church, and if I do control shift C, then I can hover over the contacts name and then I just expanded this down here. See where I'm at down here, this stuff? And I just took a screenshot of that and pasted it into Claude so I could say, hey, by the way, if you want to know the structure, I didn't even go into the structure of the HTML element. I just said, hey, look at the screenshot so that you can know, see the pick for the inspected elements. Please tell me how to write a script that goes to each URL and then saves those three pieces of contact information in a CSV file. So I'm having it actually write the script that saves in CSV, which I can open up in uh, Excel. It's just a CSV Excel file, uh, that contact information, name, email, and phone. So Claude does its thing, you know, it says what it's doing here. And then over here in this side, it actually just writes a Python script. Let me tell you about my free weekly newsletter, Got Sheet. I started this a couple of years ago to help you get good at spreadsheets. And today I focus on any tooling that will help you be more productive through automation, email marketing, design, whatever. We get into the AI weeds a little bit, a lot of it sometimes, and we still cover the basics like spreadsheets. Good old spreadsheets account for a ton of time-saving activities in my businesses. Check out the link in the description below. You can find it at gotsheet.xyz, and I hope that it's useful for you. So I glanced at this because I know Python and I generally can work out what it's doing here, but I didn't correct anything. I just down here clicked save right down here and put it on my desktop and ran it and it worked. Uh, let's hop into VS Code, the code editor that I use, and I'll show you how it works. Um, all it's really doing up here, well, we'll talk about it in the code editor. So I downloaded this file and then I made, where are we? I made this URL scraper folder uh, on my computer and it's got three things in it. So it's got the Python script, which was literally copy and pasted, and I'll show it to you in the editor in a second, from Claude. I've got the URLs text, which is simply those 10 URL addresses, each address on a separate line. And then it's actually got the first CSV file that I generated just a minute ago. We'll create another one to show you the process, but this is the results. This is what we wanted uh, to begin with and, and check it out. I mean, there, there it is. Uh, boom. Name, email, phone, URL. So it did exactly what I wanted it to. And let's close this out. Don't save. And let's go into VS Code so I can show you. I mean, this is, this is just too cool. This is too cool. All right, here is VS Code. Let me just make it a little bit bigger so I'm not zooming in constantly for you. Uh, here is webscraper.py. That's the Python file. This is the Python script. And here's what it's doing. 
We've got it importing some things up here, requests from Beautiful Soup. This is a web scraping uh, library that is often used for things like this in Python. It's importing CSV, same thing. That's something that is going to be useful in creating CSV files. Time, that is because we're having a slight delay so that we can give it a chance in the script to go to each page, get the info, write it to where we need it to before it starts going to the next page. So it's common practice to put a little time delay in there. And then random, honestly, I don't know what random is even used for, <laughs> but it's in here somewhere, somewhere. Let's see. Add a random delay between requests to be polite to the server. Interesting. So uh, it's not a uniform delay. It's adding some randomness so that we don't get like flagged, I guess. I don't know. Uh, this is 83 lines. Actually, it's 82. 83 is just a blank line. And by running it, or in order to run it, rather, let's go back to Claude, because say you've done all the directions, but you've never run a script before. How on earth do we do this? Well, Claude just tells us all we need to know right over here. We'll help you code it. And then the, it says what the script does. And then in order to use the script, boom, important, install the required libraries if you don't have them. So this right here, all this does is install requests and beautiful soup for the stuff that we needed, the libraries we needed that are not already installed with Python so that we can run what we're doing here. All right, create a text file called URLs text dot text or txt, and that's I renamed mine just so it matched that. You could rename it in the in the script if you wanted to, in the same directory as your script, and add all the URLs one line per or one per line, and it had already done that for us. And then we just run the script. Boom, you type in Python script name dot py, and in this case, our script name was what web scraper. I think let's go back to here webscraper.py. Now, if you're on a Mac, you're going to probably, or at least I did when I was using my Mac the other day, you have to write Python 3, so all one word, Python, and then the numeral 3 uh, before you uh, call the program or in order to call the program. I'm not sure what that's about. Again, I'm not a programmer. I just, I know enough to be dangerous here. Uh, but just a note for Mac users, uh, you may have to do that. Then down here, uh, in order to open this little uh, code editor, this is not a code editor, this command line inside the code editor, you can do control tilde, which is the number or the little icon or the key right next to the number one on your keyboard. And then that will open up this and you can run your script by doing python web scraper.py and watch it run. So it's going scraped from that URL. It's getting the name, uh, the email, and the phone. And it's doing them one at a time with that little bit of delay in between. Now, let's say I wanted to grab the... Let's say I wanted to grab this, the name of the church also. So I'm going to take another screenshot... Let's just do this live and see if it works. I'm going to take another screenshot of that uh, inspected web element so it shows where the Wallace Memorial Baptist Church is. I'm going to go back to Claude and I'm going to say, hey, this is perfect. Let me zoom in for you so you see it. Hey, this is perfect. However, take a look at this pic of the entire element on the page. I need one more piece of information, the name of the church. You can see where that is in the structure. Please modify the code so that's included with the name, email, and phone. All right, and then it goes off to do its thing, right? So let's see what it's doing. It's rewriting some of this up here. It's changing lines. You see it changing lines over here. This is so cool to watch in real time. Looks like we're good. And it's saying, hey, we've updated the script to include the church information in the scraping process. So let's try that out. So I'm going to click download file down here. And it gives me a warning up here. Hey, this could harm your device. And yeah, I do want to, I do want to keep that. And you know what? We didn't need to do that. Let's just, let's just copy all this. And we're going to take it just raw straight over into our editor. We're just going to live on the edge. 
We're going to paste it in there. We're going to save it. Now we're going to rerun this thing. Scraped and it's saying organization ministry leader. So it's actually not doing the correct thing. All right. So we're going to go back over here to Claude and we're going to open this up. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's scraping this line instead of this line. I'm going to copy this, copy element, and then I'm going to go over here to Claude and say, hey, that's scraping the wrong thing. It should scrape this element. This is the example for the Wallace Memorial Baptist Church. I do not need the, what was that other one called? The ministry leader. Okay, I'm going to put that in quotes. Let's see what it does now. So it's going to fix it. Over here, we can see it doing some changes. Again, I am not at all double checking this. We're just taking it in there. We're playing with live ammunition here. Copy the contents right down here is what I'm clicking for that. I'm going to go back over here to not my face, but this copy and paste. Let's do it again. And now check it out. We got it. We got it. Bing, Shoreline, and then Bing, Wallace Memorial Baptist. Yes, so that's exactly what we needed. I hope this was as interesting to you as it was exciting for me. I just love automating some simple things like this that are real simple to do, but when you have to do it multiple times, it becomes quite time consuming. I'd rather have a computer do it for me. If you like stuff like this, you'll like my newsletter. It's free. It's linked in the description. It's called Got Sheet. Goes out weekly. I think that you would appreciate subscribing to it. I know I would appreciate having you on the list. Hope you have a great one. Check this video out next because I love making these also. You're awesome.